Hello, I'm Super Orange Cat here. I'm today doing a quick review of episode three of Fiend of Pirate Princess and just give my thoughts on it. I'm going to start with some of the things I really liked about this episode and then go into some things I really didn't like about this episode. So some of the stuff I like about this episode. You know what? I like the feel for the atmosphere in this episode. That sounds like a weird thing, but when you go to Barbaral, go to this like pirate town, it really gives this impression that like, oh, you're going and you're visiting this pirate town, you know? And like I said, and I hinted at this last uh, Fina Pirate Princess video I made, but this does remind me in many ways of One Piece, where a lot of it was almost kind of like the slice of life show at points, where it really was just these pirates going from place to place, eventually trying to find the One Piece, but in this time it's about a, a girl trying to figure out what's a magic crystal. Not really a magic crystal, it's a weird crystal mint, you know? And overall, also, I like the general, how they try to color the characters in the show. Especially with, and that's one thing, and there's one thing I was worried about when I heard, oh, basically it's me, Fena, and there's me, like, these seven, eight different, like, pirate ninjas that follow her. I'm like, they're gonna end up characterizing, like, two or three of them, and the other one are just gonna be background fodder, you know? But no, every single one of the pirate ninjas so far, I felt like they've given some time and effort into their characterization, you know? Which is something I like to see, and it helps me to, you know, kind of attach myself to these characters in a way, like... For example, you had, like, the twins, the twins that Fena was with in this episode, and, like, so much of the early characterization made it look like, oh, there, there's, gonna be, there's gonna be this, like, lazy, loud idiot, these are the dumbasses of the group, these people are, like, the ones that are just kind of being dragged along, but you had this episode, like, dude, piece by piece, it revealed that they're actually amazing fighters, especially with the French pirate zombie girl saying, Oh, they're, they're the goblin twins. I think those were the goblin twins, which is why she completely avoided fighting them. Which, that's interesting, too, considering that these two guys have some type of past, you know, that this girl knows about. And that's something I think is going to be pretty interesting. Another thing I liked was, you had the rapey guy from the first, not the, not, not the rapey that actually tried to rape her, but, like, the guy who bought her to rape her. He, he came back in this episode, and he had his female pirates. And then you had, like, the twins be like, Oh, you hide behind women's bodies. It's like, no. It's like, no, these females are, like, pretty good fighters. He just hired a good fighting force, man. You know? It was like, that was kind of funny, too. Especially, like, when they started flirting with the female pirates while fighting them. Like, you had the one... You had the one that... I forget if it was Kaede or the other one. Was like, well, I would kill you if you didn't have such a nice boob-to-ass ratio. <laughs> like, this show. This show, if they played it a little more tongue-in-cheek could really come off like more of a family-friendly Konosuba, which is something this show is starting to remind me of, which is a good thing considering I absolutely love Konosuba, which is one of the highlights of the show. And then later, that's the thing, all the female pirates are hot in this show. Like, first, Faina is okay. Faina is like, if she didn't have the cut hair, she'd be much higher. And I think from what they show in promo material, she ends up styling her hair a little, which makes it look a little better. Onward, but again, you can't ask for great looking hair when you literally cut it off with a sword. Karen's kind of hot. I like her. Her personality is not off. For being named Karen, her personality is not that off putting yet. You know, and she's she's not like like there's points where she looked like she was gonna be like the stick in the mud serious character, but no, she ends up having a bit of her own personality too, which I've come to like also out of her. And then of course you had like the female villain pirates in this episode, like. I mentioned my 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 waifu in the show is the short, pink-haired girl with the very French accent, who I guess is a swordswoman because she's holding a sword. The one that basically bailed out of fighting. She's my favorite. the The pirate with the gun was hot too, and of course the one with the nice boob to ass ratio, according to Kaede, was nice too. I thought, and that's that's always a good thing, you know. And it's a little like sort of online where it's like you could tell they're putting a lot of effort in seeing. How many, how many waifus can we fit into one show, <laughs> basically, you know? And another thing, like, sort of online, you know? You notice how, like, the, the character they're playing up to be, like, the main villain of this series. And she is, uh, seductive, long hair, naked, and basically flirts with males. Like, gets her power, not gets her power, but distributes her power by flirting with males to distribute influence. Does that remind you of anyone? Maybe a certain character from Sword Online Alicization. Yes, I'm talking about Administrator. Administrator? Yeah. And I thought, it's like, there's, this is just way too similar not to have been inspired in any way by it. 
you know? Let's just hope she doesn't get raped to death by a flaming clown. Look that up. That's exactly how Administrator actually dies, you know? But it'll be seeing more to see there. And, yeah, and some of the things I maybe didn't like as much about this episode, they still cannot put down a good, uh, uh, they cannot separate good, like, serious from wacky moments still. Like, in the first couple episodes, like, you go from, like, oh, this fat guy can't get up to, oh, Fana's about to get raped. Like, and, like, lickety split like, like that, like, in a snap of a finger, you know? And although you could say, though, that's a snapping pace, it still feels a little wonky. Just like the very first scene of the first episode where it's literally the villain of the week talking about, hey, I want to rape the main character. That sets up a precedent some people might not like, you know? And especially with Toonami's precedent of being very censor-happy when it comes to anything remotely sexual, that's not maybe not the best uh, thing, you know? But ultimately, another thing I didn't really like as much about this episode was, like, and this kind of goes to that point before, when it was the end when Yukimaru saves Fana, runs away with her, and gets shot in the process. You have this thing where it's like, you have this, like, serious moment where, like, Fana is, like, sees, like, blood running down his arm and is, like, trying to, trying to, like, you know, come for him, trying to, like, treat it, and then he, like, slaps her away. Instead of playing, this is when they should have played up the shoujo. This is when they should have this moment of, like, I want to help you type of way. I love you. I want to help you. Please let me in type of moment. Instead, it's almost played like a joke where she's like, well, well, well. And she's like, well, I could help you. I think there was music too that made it sound wacky. And it just threw off the seriousness of that scene. A scene that really set up itself up extremely well. You just kind of. It's like, it's like, what if in Star Wars Episode uh, 4, when he, was it Episode 4? Yeah, Episode 4, when it's like, I am your father, and it's like, no, it's not true, that's impossible! And then, like, Darth Vader responds by just farting loudly. That's basically what that's like, you know? It just took whatever gravitas from what was, like I said again, a really well-set-up scene and just threw it away. And that's something I'm really worried about, considering that this show seems very committed to that wackiness, and definitely this episode, and because, maybe because that wackiness, another kind of slight down note is, this episode, although there was moments that definitely are gonna play later in the plot, felt much more like a filler episode with the whole, like I said, One Piece, where it's like, so much of the show is just going island to island doing stuff without really necessarily going closer to our goal. Like, really the only notable, big notable plot moment was them finding the other stone and knowing that that other stone came from somewhere in Germany, you know. Other than that, it was just like, oh, look at Fana get, look at Fana pick out her clothes, styling her hair and stuff, and then look at everyone doing dumb shit on the island, basically. And that's what it felt like. And like this whole thing of Yuki Maru, like on the, like realizing like this whole like he kept losing this game of chance to determine who stays on the ship five times in a row him doing in his head, like, wait, if I do this, do this, and he's trying to play it out in his head why he keeps losing. And that was kind of a funny moment, but at the same time, it really felt like, especially since at the end of the second episode, you had this moment of, like, we're going off to sea, we're off to new adventures, we're really gonna do something, we're gonna go to a plot, and again, and that's maybe one downside of this being a very open-ended show, where there, there's been talks that this will be a more than a one season thing, and that might encourage them to add more filler or add more pointless plot lines, and that's always a worry. Unlike something like, let's go to the other Tsunami originals, the Fully Cooly sequels, where the, the story was going to be told in six episodes. For better or for worse, it was going to be, it was going to have a start and it was going to have a finish, and you can already see the finish line from where you start. Here, you don't see the finish line. It might end after one season, it might last three or four seasons. Who knows, you know? And that, and the last episode is probably when they end up solving this whole thing with the stone, or have the final battle against the naked woman, or whatever. And you don't see the finish line, so you don't know, is this gonna be, like, is the next so many episodes gonna be, like, plot-focused, or are we just gonna be fucking around island to island, with, at the end, being like, oh, that pirate ship, yeah, the evil person's there, fight him. Oh, and by the way, I fucking called it that one. Chivalrous guy with the blonde hair is working with the villain. I fucking called it. So obvious. That is a trope and a half right there. But ultimately, right now, and I, 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 know, I know the last two or so minutes, I've been just railing on the show. 
overall, I still think this is a very enjoyable experience, experience so far. If I had to rate this episode, I would actually give it a nice 8 out of 10, a nice solid rating right there. And I'm enjoying it more than I did both Fully Cooley sequels so far. I think it's well produced, it's well animated. The plot, I could see some issues with the plot in the future. That's really where the points get knocked down. And also, I don't quite like Fana as a character yet. Maybe it's because she still has to do that character arc of, like, taking things more seriously. And I think for that to happen, someone, one of the ninjas will have to get, like, killed off. Or someone's going to have to get, like, gravely injured or something like that. And I feel like that's going to still take a few more episodes. Considering from the promo, the next episode is going to be a borderline filler episode where it's like Fana wants to learn how to use a weapon, which admittedly she should, you know, at this point, you know. But it's I feel like it's going to be, like, that one scene from... The Promised Neverland Season 2, where Emma learns to use a bow and arrow, but stretched out over 30 minutes instead of, like, 3 minutes. But at the same time, like I said, I'm overall, I'm enjoying the show so far. I'm, I'll give this episode now a 10 again. Leave, what do you think about this episode? Leave your comments, leave your opinions down below. I'm Super Orange Cat, and that is all.